how you doing everyone? Nick White, owner of Off Leash Canine Training. Today is our third part of our five part series on confidence building in your dog. We've discussed socialization, we've discussed noise desensitization, and today we're going to discuss object desensitization. What is object desensitization? Object desensitization is a confidence building drill that you can start incorporating in your dog's obedience training to help them become a more confident and more stable dog. For example, do you have a dog who's afraid of vacuum cleaners? Or maybe a dog who's afraid of motorcycles or skateboards when they go by or kids on bicycles? All of those things are object desensitization. It's very simple drills that you can start doing with your dog to make them much more confident, much more stable, much more obedient, and an all-around more well-rounded dog. The dogs we're going to show you in the upcoming videos are a couple dogs who we've done object desensitization and noise desensitization with. So you can see the huge difference it makes in obedience training and confidence in your dog. Welcome back. So did you notice in the videos how we were throwing objects, we were banging on stuff, we're opening slamming doors, we're rattling cans, we're doing a bunch of really crazy things that make really loud noises and a bunch of visual effects for the dog. Things flying over their head, things bouncing off the walls, and if you really watch the dogs, they really don't even flinch. Now as you probably know, your average dog would have jumping up and taken off running in a heartbeat. But because we did so much object desensitization, the dogs were very stable and they pretty much didn't even pay attention to it. That's what you want to obtain with your dog, that high level of confidence and stability, all because you've incorporated object desensitization into the dog's training. A lot of the times, object desensitization and noise desensitization go hand in hand. If you notice things that a lot of dogs are afraid of, vacuum cleaners, the trash bag, motorcycles, what do all those objects have in common? They make a very distinct noise. The trash bag, when you open it, it makes that pop. The vacuum cleaner, as you know, the, the, the sound a vacuum cleaner makes. Um, a motorcycle, a loud, roaring, deep vibration noise. So a lot of the times, object desensitization, noise desensitization, which we spoke about earlier, they actually go hand in hand. So it's really important to do both of them. You can desensitize your dog to the vacuum itself but maybe once you turn it on, he still runs. Or you can desensitize your dog to the motorcycle when it's sitting there, but maybe if you start it up and give it a little throttle, he'll still take off running. That means you did a great job desensitizing your dog to that object, but you didn't do noise desensitization. So it's really important to comprehend the fact that object desensitization and noise desensitization oftentimes go hand in hand. Like in the video where you see us throw that big blue barrel over our heads, that's object desensitization, but what happens when that barrel hits the ground, it makes a loud boom and it shakes a little bit. 
So if we did not do noise desensitization with the dog, he would have been fine with the object being tossed, but as soon as it hit the ground and it made that loud bang, he would have still jumped up and taken off running. So it's really important to incorporate object desensitization and noise desensitization into this training that you're doing with your dog. So how do you desensitize your dog to these new objects that you found he's afraid of? We do a drill that we call flooding. What flooding is, it's very simple. It's find something your dog's afraid of and create and repeat that object or that noise as much as humanly possible until your dog gets over that fear. The key is, is you have to make it a positive experience for your dog. For example, if we have a dog at our training facility who's afraid of a vacuum cleaner, we'll put him on a short leash and hold them while we're vacuuming the floor. Initially, he's gonna try to run away, but we're holding him on the leash. So we'll just pull him back and praise him and then continue to vacuum. He tries to run away, we pull him back, praise him, continue to vacuum. Generally within about 10 minutes, you see the dog really no longer pays attention to the vacuum cleaner. Because simply what we've taught him is you can't run away from it. And if you stay close, you get praised, you get rewarded. And what the dogs learn is I'm really afraid, but I'm staying here. Nothing's happening to me. I'm getting praised, I'm getting rewarded, and I'm completely fine. The problem that most people do with their dog is they let their dogs be afraid of that object. The dog sees that new object, they take off running, and what do you do as the owner? Oh, it's okay, baby, you know, it's just a vacuum cleaner, and you comfort them. As I've said before, in my opinion, comfort is just another word for praise. When you comfort a dog, you're doing the same mannerisms that you do when you praise a dog. Nice, light baby talk, you know, petting them, maybe picking them up. So comfort's just another word for praise. So essentially, if your dog's afraid of something, and you bring them back and pamper them and baby them, all you're doing is you're praising the behavior of fear. So what's the dog gonna do? They're gonna repeat what they get rewarded for. So never praise or comfort them in the act of being fearful. Praise them when they're being confident and when they're not trying to run away, when they're in a stable sit position and you turn the vacuum on and they don't take off running, that's when you praise them. If they try to run, we bring them back, put them back in a sit, turn the vacuum on, maybe they'll flinch this time but they won't move, good boy, we praise that desired behavior. Always praise the desired behavior. As I always say, never accept anything that you don't want the dogs to repeat 10 times. So if you praise fear once, expect them to display fear the next 10 times. Dogs will do what they get rewarded for, whether it's positive or negative. When you're doing object desensitization, it's much easier to start with a dog who's somewhat obedient, so you can actually control the dog's direction. Um, it's very, very hard to it's not very hard, but it's harder to do object desensitization um, with a dog who doesn't listen to begin with. For example, if we have an obedient dog who we have control over and control of, um, but he's afraid of objects, if he takes off running, we can call him back, put him back into the sit, repeat. He takes off, call him back, put him in a sit, repeat. If you have a dog who doesn't listen or has no obedience whatsoever, you're just going to have to physically go get him, bring him back, etc. Um, so it's not completely necessary to have an obedient dog, but it definitely helps. And the great thing is obedience actually goes hand in hand with confidence building as well, which we'll discuss in the next uh, video blog that we're going to do. Some popular object desensitization that you probably see in 300 of our 500 plus videos is the place command. Place is 100% an object desensitization drill and routine. Um, you can actually see some of our place before and after videos. If you click playlist on our YouTube channel, you'll see a section labeled confidence building before and after. You'll see a lot of dogs who are deathly afraid to get on place objects. Um, and then you'll see their after video, we say place and they come run and jump up on it like they've done it their whole life. So what we do, as I stated earlier, is we find something they're afraid to do and we make them do it repeatedly and make it a positive experience when they do it. We pull them up on it, they get up on it, we wait for them to be stable and not shaking and trying to jump off and then we really reward that good boy, good boy, yeah, good boy, buddy, break, and then we pull them off and we repeat. Generally, within about 15 to 20 minutes, anyone who's went through our training program can vouch. The dogs are jumping up there happily, confidently, like they've done it their entire life. And this is a dog for three, four, five years who's been deathly afraid to jump or get on new objects or get on new surfaces um, because we no longer let them get away with the behavior of fear. As I say every day, find an object your dog's afraid of and make them deal with it repetitively until they're no longer afraid of it. Never, ever, ever let your dog be afraid. That's really, really important. 
When doing object desensitization, such as some of the things you see in our videos where we're throwing objects, we're picking up that big blue barrel and throwing it over our heads, um, start off in baby steps, just like noise desensitization. So start off maybe just picking up the blue barrel a foot off the ground and dropping it. And if he jumps up, put him back, repeat. Once he's no longer jumping up from that and you're praising him, then pick it two feet up, repeat, then three feet, then four feet, and then throw it over your head. So a lot of people kind of mess up object desensitization because they try to accelerate um, too fast in the, in the very beginning phase. So start off with baby steps. For example, if I wanted to get my dog desensitized to the sound of a 12 gauge shotgun, I wouldn't start off with a shotgun, him in a sit, and me shooting the shotgun. I would maybe start off with the shotgun 50 yards away, and then once he got fine with that, bring it 25 yards. Once he got fine with that, 10 yards, etc. So you want to do the same thing with object desensitization. I wouldn't recommend you going out today, having your dog sit who's afraid of an object, um, pick it up and throw it over your head towards them and expect them to stay there. Start off with very small gradual steps and in a very short amount of time doing that you will be able to rapidly build up to the, some of the stuff you see in our videos. So it's really important to understand that you really want to slowly build up your dog's confidence in broken down steps um, versus try to you know, go crazy and go all out in the very beginning. That'll really make your job easier and it'll make your dog much more confident and it'll slowly build his confidence up versus scaring him um, from the very beginning. If you look at some of the most confident dogs in the world, such as French ring dogs, Mondio ring dogs, etc., if you watch some of those videos on YouTube, you'll see a lot of object desensitization incorporated into their training. Um, I would highly encourage you to um, YouTube, you know, French ring dog training. And some of the things you'll see that's 100% object desensitization is the decoys, aka the guys in the bite suits. Um, you'll see them with milk jugs filled with pennies and rocks, and you'll see police tape, you know, twirling all around, and batons, and the dogs are jumping over barrels. All of those things are object desensitization. They're getting the dog used to running through any object, any ridiculous thing, in order to get to the objective, which is the decoy in the Sioux. So if you look at the most confident, amazingly obedient dogs in the world, you'll see object desensitization all throughout their videos. A lot of people do not realize that's what it is, but that's 100% what it is, is they're desensitizing them to every weird object. They're jumping through rings, they're running through police tape, they're you know running through milk jugs and bottles. All that's object desensitization. In fact, I was recently out at um, Von Lick Kennels, which is the Military Special Forces training hub. Um, Ken Licklider's the owner, really good friend, awesome group out there. Um, they have a pool a little baby pool and that baby pool is filled with 16 ounce water bottles and milk jugs and they have coins in the jugs and rocks in the jugs and what they do is they set their dogs inside of that so they're walking around bumping into hundreds of milk jugs and water bottles and things you know the jugs are rattling and it's making all kinds of noise they get around in there all that is is object desensitization and noise desensitization. Taking that puppy and in the very beginning creating a very well-rounded, very confident dog who's not afraid to go in any surface, any texture. They'll jump through car windows, they'll leap over seven foot walls to get the guys. Um, and all of that's based off doing object desensitization with your dog. Well, I hope you learned something in this object desensitization part three of our five part series on confidence building. Whether you have a three week old dog, an eight week old dog, or a 10 year old dog, it's never too late to do confidence building and object desensitization specifically. Um, we deal with dogs at our training facility in Northern Virginia all the time who's three, four years old, they're afraid of vacuums, they're afraid when the owner mops, and generally within about 15 minutes, um, we're vacuuming the dog with the vacuum who's lived in complete fear of it his whole life. So all we do, never let your dogs be afraid, reward the behavior of stability and confidence and not the behavior of fear and flood them with whatever they're afraid of. Do it in baby steps. And if you stick to those main core concepts, doing object desensitization slash noise desensitization, you'll notice a much more confident and stable dog in a very short amount of time. Look forward to working with you guys. You can visit our website at offleashcaninetraining.com. The link's also at the bottom of this video. And we will be doing part four of our five part series next, which is gonna be obedience and the importance of obedience and confidence building.